فج قد قصدوا من كل فج عميق أتوا ملبينا للمال والأوطان وأهلهم تركوا حجاج بيت الشوق يحملهم To be honest, the first tawaf is difficult. You're worried about your left shoulder being facing Kaaba. You're worried about how many times you've gone round. You're worried about upsetting people next to you. After it's done, you feel a relief. And to be honest, we did many tawafs while we've been here. And the more you do, the closer you get to Allah, the more relaxed you feel. You get more confident. So don't be scared to do it. It's just the first one, it's a responsibility to get it perfect. So it's accepted by Allah. Don't lose your spirituality. Okay, it's a balance between the rules, the fiqh and the spirituality. Now, as he already mentioned that his walker was lost by the uh, airlines and um, that was a pretty setback for Asim because he wanted to do the tawaf on his own. And um, me being there helping him I was actually more concerned about his safety, but seeing how determined he was um, and he wanted to walk on the canes, um, I said, it's, it's perfectly fine if you can do it. It's actually better than, you know, than being on a walker because you're actually walking yourself. And um, I was there just for him to help him out. Um, I was right behind him at all times, uh, walking right behind him, um, just making sure that he don't get hit over by someone and um, I was expecting that people will be pushing around but what I actually saw during the tawaf was um, there were people who were actually looking at him and saying that wow mashallah look at him that even he has trouble walking but he's doing it <coughs> and he's doing the tawaf on his own and there are a couple of instances where people actually came and kissed him and gave him the was that may, may Allah he gets, may he get shifa. And uh, that was itself an amazing experience to see and um, um, and to just to watch him do the tawaf on his own. And I know him on regular basis on how he walks. And um, during the tawaf, this guy was running. I can, I can assure you that, that he was walking fast. He was excited, he was um, ecstatic that he is doing it on his own and it was just an amazing sight to see that um, he was doing so well during the tawaf. I have to say that I was very delighted at my ability to do tawaf. Um, um, like I said before, my walker went missing and I had to uh, use a wheelchair, but by the grace of Allah Almighty, um, I was still able to use my canes and uh, and take a number of rounds myself. And that w that w that just that just made my um, that just made my uh, made my day, made my night. I could not wait for the Hajj to just come and be part of it and get it done with. And um, I would like to thank my organizers that I come with, the HAC Hajj Assistance Committee and the scholars in there, um, Sheikh Ali, Sheikh Noor, uh, these people with their daily lectures, they were gearing us up for what the Hajj spiritually is. It's not just doing um, what Hazrat Ibrahim was that what Hazrat Ibrahim did in his time uh, it wasn't just that it was the reason why he did it the reason why how we can apply it in our daily lives <laughs> about uh, around 1 uh, 1 a.m. and uh, I'm 
can tell that this is a... Uh, I'm excited to see what the night and uh, day has in store. I'm actually, I wouldn't say nervous. <clears throat> I'm um, just ready to uh, to handle what uh, what comes my way. So inshallah, we'll take it from the from there and uh, and see how it goes. Uh, inshallah. And the significance and the importance of making good use of a night of this nature. This is a night of baraka. It is a night of rahma. It's a night leading to the day of Arafah. I think that is the moment each and every one of us has been waiting for ever since we arrived in this holy city of Mecca, Medina, and the entire country of... So the, ni the night of Arafah was actually one, again, filled with um, excitement, but also difficulty because we knew that tomorrow, the day after would be a day of uh, immense heat and uh, not the best of accommodations. Uh, uh, the bathroom was a ways from the tent and the, <clears throat> the ground was actually not very smooth at times. And um, so uh, again, the day of Arafah was hot and um, it was also very quite uncomfortable actually uh, but again the day of Arafah is to remind us of actually the day of Kiamat and how hot how hot it will be on 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 the day of recompense and so in that way it was actually fitting but also humbling it's such a day where Allah will listen to you. He he will um, forgive you for all your sins, and it, it's, it will be a fresh start. But how are you prepared to do and be on that day and supplicate? And um, mashallah, through a lot of learnings, through a lot of readings, uh, through a lot of lectures from the sheikhs, um, we went down to Arafat a night before. And we started the amals of uh, the night of Arafat and uh, and the day of Arafat. So the whole the night the amal of the night of Arafat was the um, dua that was read by well that was given to us by Imam Hussein alayhi salam when he was performing his last Hajj and he had to change that into Umrah and. Um, uh, go to Karbala from there. Um, that dua was such powerful dua. I, I've always heard about it. I never heard it before. I never read it before. Um, but this time when I read it with, um, with translations, um, it was such an amazing dua. Like only a, a dua like that only an imam can deliver, and only an imam can know and glorify Allah at such a level where you, 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 will, you will think that this is how people should supplicate and on the Arafat day with that supplication with that dua there is no way I was thinking that I was not forgiven and when the day of Arafat came we did the dua of the day of the Arafat which was almost a two hour uh, dua and um, it was read in Arabic but at the same time, I was reading in English, and again, what an amazing dua! It was meant just for the day of Arafat to glorify Allah and to remember Allah and to what He is, what are His remas and namas on us, and to thank Him for it and to supplicate over there to ask for forgiveness. And uh, um, it's 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 it was an amazing experience. It was. Um, it was the most important day of my life, the Arafat day, uh, because this was my chance to have a clean slate. Um, no one is perfect. Um, everyone have their pet peeves or sins and uh, gunas, and you know it's to go from there with a clean slate. Uh, it was, it was mind blowing. 
So we're in Arafat now. Uh, this is our tent. Last night we had uh, what we call a du'a session. Very powerful moving du'as. One especially powerful written by Imam Hussein. Salam. Makes you think about what you've done in the past, how magnificent Allah is, and where we are today to redeem uh, redemption basically, <coughs> forgiveness. And it makes you think about your past sins. So there was a lot of emotion last night, crying, everybody was very emotional. Today is nearly midday. The heat is phenomenal, especially because the coolers have gone off, the electricity is finished, so we're feeling the heat today. But that's the test, is to give you a taste of uh, the Day of Judgment, when there'll be no shade, no roof above our heads. The only shade will be the shade of the Divine Throne, the Arsh of Allah, for the true believers, inshallah. He said, once you resort to Allah, you are called Muhtar. So usually I feel nervous before any new thing. Arafah was different. We've had several lectures every day, in between Salah, end of Salah, end of the evening. And the main thing I've understood that it's all for the connection between you and your Lord. Nobody else matters. And you're just there to beg for His mercy, beg for His forgiveness, thank Him for all the benefits and barakah that you've been given, and obviously ask dua for your friends and family and loved ones. But one person told me that if you leave Arafah and you doubt that all your sins have been forgiven, it's a sin in itself. You have to remember that Allah is all merciful. And Arafah is where he forgives everyone, which made me feel more comfortable that I must leave this place knowing that Allah has forgiven me. For we, out of all the two billion Muslims in the world, we're just one percent that have been chosen to be on this holy place, on this holy pilgrimage. And for that, I am truly blessed. As insan, there, are, there is always room for improvement. So, uh, I also wanted to ensure that going forward, I was a better Asim uh, after the day of Arafah than before. So that was one of my primary, uh, one of my primary goals and one of my primary uh, things that I wanted to accomplish on the on the day of Arafah. In addition to asking for forgiveness for um, any of my lapses that may or may not have occurred. <clears throat> Also, it's a great time to remember our marhumin and deceased people, and also any, anyone else who may be in uh, need of our prayers or du'as. Um, a lot of people um, who, a lot of people who you and I know, uh, they may be in a not as good a situation as we are, so it's always important to remember those uh, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers who, uh, who aren't as blessed as we are living in, uh, living in the West. There's Surah Yasin going on at the moment. Uh, for yesterday's Amals were uh, incredible. Um, they were very uplifting and uh, very heart-touching and heart-touching and and warming and inshallah I mean I, I felt um, I felt very uh, honored to be in uh, this tent uh, at this time and uh, especially yesterday um, so inshallah I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, beginning the amals of the day. Um, there's a little bit of a, of a preamble at the moment, but inshallah, uh, we've got another six hours here, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, gaining some spirituality and elevating myself as best as I can. After the Amal of the Arafat, we were given an hour 
before the Maghrib time was finished and the Arafah day was officially finished. Um, to just go and be with Allah and uh, um, just to supplicate yourself, talk to Him, um, talk as if He's there, listening to you right there as a conversation. And um, that was one part. And I had another s second thought in the mind at the same time was um, it is. It is told, but it is told, and it is um, mentioned that our Imam of Time is present on the day of Arafat. He has to be there, uh, otherwise the Hajj is uh, not complete without an Imam. And um, just to keep that thought in mind, and knowing that your Imam is there, um, probably walking among you, or uh, in whatever form he may be, or you know, it's 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 it's, it's just a, such a spiritual experience. It's you know that your imam is there. Like how big is that? It's it's amazing. Like would you have thought that I was if I have lived in the time of Imam Ali, what a life that would be. You know, imagine you're living in the time of your current imam mm -hmm. and he's there somewhere, and um, the the spiritual significance just increases. Well. I had a few um, requests or wishes that I that I wanted to present to Allah, so um, I was able to uh, have time to state them again, and also the whole idea of have being separated from the group and everybody. It again brings to the forefront the idea of Yom al Hisab. And how, and how, essentially everybody on Yom Al Hisab is going is going to have to be uh, be accountable and be talking to Allah um, by themselves uh, or kind of explaining their actions to Allah. How at the end of the day, although. Um, Community is important at the end of the day. Um, you know, uh, everybody is responsible for their own actions, and no soul and no soul will be burdened by w with the actions of another person. As I mentioned before, the best part of the Hajj was the Arafat. But then again, you cannot um, take lightly why the Muzdalifa part and the Mina and Rami of Jamarat and uh, the Tawaf after. Um, every, every aspect of the Hajj was significant. And um, after Arafat, it was the, uh, when the Maghrib time comes after the prayer, it was the walk to uh, Muzdalifa. And, um, one of the scenes that I saw on that walk was this road full of people uh, wearing this two piece of cloth, the ihram, just plain white, simple, unstitched cloth. And you see these people just walking down the street to Muzdalifa. Millions and millions of people where your eyes cannot even see the end of it. And you would think that these guys are actually walking down for their judgment. It's, it literally felt like it was judgment day and people are just walking a straight path and um, they're just going to Allah and be judged. That was the experience that I got in Muzdalifa. This is Muzdalifa. We've come to do wukuf. I stay in this place and collect stones to throw on the shaitan. It's not exactly as I expected. I did expect more sand, there's pavement, but people are spread across the area, sleeping where they can, alhamdulillah, all united in one cause. There are tents there, but most of the people are on the road, sleeping together, united. Everybody's in white, you can't tell which country, where they're from, alhamdulillah, unity.
Today is the final stage of the pelting of the shaitan. Small, medium and large. It's to not only get rid of our sins, but all the habits that cause these sins, so that we never ever do them again. Inshallah, Allah Kabul. Once we reached Muzdalifah, um, we basically just had to sleep over there. And that's, it's actually ibadat to sleep in Muzdalifah. And before we sleep, we had to pick up the pebbles. Um, small stones um, to hit the um, Jamarat, the shaitans, the three shaitans in the Jamarat. Now, it's it, you may think that you know it's just picking up the stones and hitting the shaitan. It's it's way more than that. It's um, it's it's basically arming yourself with ammunition against the shaitan of current times. It's it's thinking in your mind that what if the shaitan comes today? What will your um, what will your action be? What will you do? How will you react to it? And when you're hitting the shaitan, you're thinking that what or what are you getting rid of? So once in Arafat, you have been forgiven, but what about your next life? What about what about the time that you will spend after the Hajj? Picking up the stones was like picking up a vice that I had or somebody else had. Some that I that I was looking to minimize or completely uh, completely throw out of my life was uh, um, maybe uh, a temper a temper sometimes in dis discussing with other people uh, and putting forward statements it it can be quite uh, heated although I'm not I'm not one to be hot tempered but occasionally uh, you know uh, shaitan gets the better of us you would think that it you know this is uh, just words but when you're there and you're actually hitting the shaitan at that time um, it is quite a powerful experience it's uh, when you're hitting the stone you do feel like you're getting rid of it and the desire of that is so strong in your heart is that you know that you will do it and if you won't do it if, if you are not able to do it you will try your best to do it it's, you cannot forget it now and uh, i know we are still humans we still make mistakes but uh, the point is to try So this is um, <coughs> the last stages of our Hajj uh, journey. This post halak, as you can see, has been shaven off, and we've pelted the uh, jamarat again. Final thing, last stage is wukuf. We're just uh, resting, having a good conversation about Islam, reading du'as, and it's coming to an end. This is, it's a sad, sad time because we've been very close to Allah in this period. And the test will be now to keep that closeness when we go back to the UK, Canada, Tanzania, all our prospective uh, locations that we've come from, and to keep our prayers in check, read them on time, and just keep Allah's zikr and thought with us at all times. Because the West is very, very testy. Over here, you know, everybody's reading du'as. It's a nice brotherly unity environment, and it's a little bit easier because the places we're in are very holy. All of them, Arafat, Muzdalifa, Mina, Mecca, Medina. We've been blessed that prophets, all the prophets, Ahlul Bayt, have been walking around these lands. And that's why there's a, an aura, a feeling of holiness about them. And so I'm going to miss that. Right now we're in Jamarat, uh, actually Mina, where we hit the Jamarat. And I believe this is the most excited, excitement part of the Hajj. It's because that 
when you go the first event I went to the Jamarat and I'm hitting the Shaitan uh, you're thinking you're just hitting a stone wall but you're actually hitting uh, your inner Shaitan in yourself and you can actually feel it that even though after Arafah you think that your sins have been forgiven but you have to prepare yourself you have to arm yourself uh, to stop from uh, uh, doing anything wrong that you were doing before and this was the perfect time to do it and let it out on the Shaitan in yourself and stone the Shaitan to whatever your vices are to whatever you were doing wrong before that you will not do it again so for example you know if there is greed in you you think of greed and you hit the sh hit the shaitan thinking that I'm not gonna be part of this greed anymore and you submit yourself completely to Allah and not any more lustful desires or could be any other uh, desires that are not um, halal in, uh, in case of Islam. Um, we don't know if this is our last hour. Uh, I mean, we still have a couple of hours here to spend in our Rukuf until Zohar. And uh, <clears throat> I'm still wondering if I will be able to finish this Hajj. But inshallah, I'm looking forward to it. And this is a spirit where everyone should keep. Uh, they should try to do this Wajib Hajj as soon as possible. I've noticed that these last three days, they've been quite um, taxing on me, although in a good way. But um, it's something that I, di I didn't know what to expect. Uh, but these last three days have uh, really, really made me uh, be grateful for my life back home in Canada. You know, we've got uh, working water and um, uh, nice bathrooms over here. Uh, most things are kind of makeshift and uh, it's, it's really put things into perspective and also uh, makes you, makes you uh, remember the have and have not uh, peoples or uh, countries of the world per se. And just uh, now I can put into perspective uh, how easy my life in Canada is compared to these uh, three or four days that have been challenging. But inshallah, um, I'm happy that it's the uh, last last day or so uh, of Hajj. And uh, although I will be missing the baraka that is present in this tent, and inshallah we can only inshallah we can only pray that our hardships and our hajj is accepted. Firstly, I've already decided I'm going to speak to my friends, family, everybody who hasn't done Hajj, that they must book their next flight, the next year, immediately. Because before I came on this trip, I read somewhere that spending the 3,000, 4,000 pounds on anything else is pointless. It's, it's a big sin. So what you should do if you're buying a car for 6,000 pounds, put 3,000 pounds aside and go to Hajj. This is a must, so I will tell all my friends to do this. 
because not only is a wajibat, it's a must, it's a spiritual reawakening of your soul. Your soul has no food and nourishment in UK, in America, in Canada, in Kenya, anywhere. The most important place is the Holy Kaaba and the precincts around the Holy House, which we pray towards, where the angels do their own tawaf above this area. So the reward for this is something separate. The reward to your soul is the most important thing. Last message I would say, do not delay this, this Hajj. Um, if you're religious, I know you will make it somehow, um, but please do not delay it. The, nobody knows, nobody has seen tomorrow. Um, I, I can assure you of myself that I will be able to live tomorrow and see the day or night. Um, this is one of the most important pillars of Islam. You have to, it's wajib on you that you complete it. Um, I have seen people regretting it, not doing it early. And um, I've, I've known people in this group that are actually doing it for their parents. And they would wish that, you know, their parents would have done it themselves. And um, it's, 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 it's only people realize when it's too late that um, we should have done it. So my message to you is please do it as soon as possible. Seize any opportunities you have in life because nothing is guaranteed. And actually, Imam Ali says um, to, d to delay is to lose. There may be someone who is like next year, next year, next year, but next year might not come. So um, it's very important to seize if there's if there's time and if there's funds and if there's uh, an opportunity to seize that opportunity to um, uh, to essentially make yourself a better person, whether that in this co in this case it's it's uh, performing the Hajj, it's fulfilling a, an obligation of the religion, and. Um, I didn't know what I didn't know what to expect when I um, signed up for Hajj. I knew generally what was required of me, uh, but you know, part of it is also uh, taking your uh, physical strength and taking your emotional strength and. Uh, using them together to accomplish accomplish this very important uh, archon of the archon of the religion and um, I would say to anybody who is thinking of delaying the Hajj not to do so simply because you don't know if you'll, you're going to be you, you don't know if there will be an opportunity for you to perform or do what you want to do in the future. So it's best to, it's best to put your best foot forward and do it as soon as possible.